I felt hopeless, worthless, and I would get up in the morning and think, if this is what life is going to be like, I don't want to be here anymore. Suddenly, I feel like I'm about to kind of explode. I've got sweat dripping down my face, and everybody's looking at me like I've grown two heads. For me, it was the severe fatigue and the painful joints. I'm Renee Hunderkamp, a London GP with a strong interest in women's health. I've come to Westminster today to meet a group campaigning for better care for women going through the menopause. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. Nice to see you all. All women experience Thanks. menopause at some point in their lives. The average age is 51, but for some women it's much younger, often due to surgery. When I went straight into surgical menopause, age 32, and I was having about 20 hot flushes a day and it was just a rolling kind of huge hot flush um, and they're exhausting. I've been through depression. It's a horrible place to be. You don't want to get up. You don't want to talk. Nobody understands it. Sometimes I don't even understand how I got there. People yeah. laugh and say, oh, you know, my brain fog. But managing a home life when you've got busy family going in and out. Yeah. But I found the butter in the dishwasher <laughs> and the knife <laughs> in the tray. <laughs> I'm 51 and I am perimenopausal. I do have hot flushes and they're not pleasant. So I completely understand where these women are coming from. As a GP, it makes me really sad to hear their stories about not being treated by their GP and their symptoms not being recognised. So I asked 19 times to be referred to an NHS specialist menopause clinic. 19 times? That's yeah. appalling. Um, and it was only when I went into the surgery, I was crying so much, I couldn't even hold myself up, um, that they, they said, we'll refer you. I made an appointment with a female GP, thinking that, that she would be more sympathetic, and she said, it's natural, suck it up. Suck it up. She yeah, she said, suck it up. <laughs> Great. GPs are failing to prescribe HRT to women that desperately need it. But with so many scare stories in the media about the risks, you can see why GPs are confused. I've come to meet Professor Marianne Lomsden to find out the truth about HRT. The uh, decline started with the publication of the Million Women Study and the Women's Health Initiative, which suggested that the harm from the preparations outweighed the benefits. HRT prescription rates fell from 6 million in 2000 to 2.5 million in 2017. People stopped prescribing HRT. They forgot that the menopause occurred and caused problems for women. The number of menopause clinics decreased dramatically and there is a whole generation of GPs who had no training in menopause medicine at all. And now we are trying to change that. The media have played a big role in women turning away from HRT. Can you take me through what the actual risk of breast cancer is? In the average UK population of menopausal age, about 23 women will get breast cancer out of every thousand. In terms of lifestyle, we see that the impact of being obese and drinking alcohol is far greater than this small risk of four cases per thousand women that is attributable to HRT. Other proven benefits of HRT include protection against bone and heart disease, but many GPs are failing to give women accurate information. I think the fact that they kept saying to me that there was a risk of breast cancer if I took HRT just fueled my fear that HRT would give me breast cancer. Emma, like many women, looked for alternatives. So then I went down the health stores and got all the black cohosh, oh, yeah, all, all this sort of thing, even a magnet that you put in your pants. Lady magnet. Lady magnet. <laughs> but nothing worked. Emma was desperate. She could no longer tolerate her hot flushes and mood swings. Then she came across bioidentical HRT. I then read about it all and thought, this is for me, this is what I've been looking for, it's tailor-made. Clinics in London offering bioidentical hormone treatment are on the increase. I'm here at the Marion Gluck Clinic to find out more. 
on a weekly basis we have about 150 patients. There's quite a demand for bioidentical hormone therapy here. What are bioidentical hormones? Bioidentical hormones are hormones which are identical to our own hormones. I can actually prepare a prescription which is totally individual to the patient in front of me. How would you do that? How would you know what I needed? The most important thing is I take your history and then I do blood tests. Keep a fist. The clinic says this information enables them to make a unique compound for each individual for around a thousand pounds. All my hot flushes stopped, which was amazing. All my moods levelled out, and then I started ha having lots of problems with my with my boobs. So really painful, really sore. So then I was told to reduce the dose. That didn't work. And then all of a sudden, like I had an actual period, which I sort of swapped one set of problems for another set of problems. Emma decided to stop her treatment, but the clinic says for many women, bioidentical hormones are successful. The majority say, I feel like myself again. I've got my life back, they have their energy back. But menopause experts in the NHS strongly disagree with what these clinics are doing. Consultant Haytham Hamoda runs an NHS menopause clinic at King's College Hospital. A woman shouldn't be going to uh, seek compounded products. I think there are issues with their safety and I do think they should be seen through the NHS and receive regulated preparations for controlling their symptoms. Are the medications that you give me safe? I can certainly reassure that the patient is safe because we monitor. We monitor the patient, we, mo we see them regularly, we do the pelvic ultrasound, which is really important because we see the effect of our medicine. But we can't say that it's safe. Though. You can never say that. The constituents, the estradiol, the progesterone, testosterone, are in themselves licensed for use. However, if you alter the dose and you mix them in together, you are making a different product which does not have market authorization from the government's regulator. And to get it, you have to do all sorts of complicated trials and see if it's safe for your population of women to take. No, it's not regulated as such because who is going to spend millions of pounds going through trials to get that product licensed? What many women don't realise is that regulated bioidentical hormones are available on the NHS, something that Emma now has prescribed by her GP. She said there is a type of HRT that you can take that is bioidentical, it's not synthetic, it's plant-based, it's gentle, and you can get it on the NHS. All HRT prescribing in NHS clinics is tailored to the patient's need and body identical, bioidentical preparations are now very much the first line of HRT used in this context. But if we're to stop women using unregulated treatments, then we desperately need to educate GPs in prescribing HRT for menopause symptoms. This is not a rare disease. This is not something that we don't know about. This is simple stuff. If we're to save GP time, to save NHS money, what we actually need is a very simple to follow guide to drop into the inbox of all GPs. And to be honest, I could produce that tomorrow.